Tata Manga. My name is Taneo. I live with my wife and my first grade son. I'm home. Welcome home, Dad. Let's play games today. Sure. I'm not going to take it easy on you. I'm not going to lose either. Every day was nice, and I was happy. Everything was great with my wife, too. Welcome home, sweetie. Want dinner? Or are you going to shower first? I sweat a lot, so I think I'm going to run to the shower first. Okay, I'll get dinner ready. Thanks. She was seriously an angel. But then, one day when I came home... I'm home! Uh, Takashi, want to play games today? No, not today. Normally, he'd be smiling and want to play, but today, he seemed a little upset. What's wrong? You seem upset. Are you feeling sick? No, I'm gonna be in my room. I was worried about my son, so I asked my wife. What happened to Takashi? I don't know. You're probably thinking too much. I don't think so. Have you seen his face? Maybe something happened in school. Did he not tell you anything? <laughs> He's fine. Just give him a few days. But he didn't get better, and he continued looking upset. That weekend, my wife went out shopping, so I decided to talk to him. Hey, Takashi, is something bothering you? You can talk to me. He stared at me, but... No, it's nothing. You've been so out of it recently. And my wife came home and butted in. You're being so annoying. Takashi is saying everything is fine. I know, but honestly, I didn't understand how she didn't care about our important son. Maybe it was puberty. I don't know. But my son was still in the first grade. I could tell he was acting funny. I wanted to figure out what was going on. Then I saw a text message. It was from an old friend, Mr. C. You at your house? Can you come out to the cafe real quick? Now? I'm with my son. I want to be with him. Yeah, it's about your son. Please, just come to the cafe. Hanabata. The second he mentioned something about my son, I realized this might lead me to figuring out what was wrong with him. I'm gonna head out for a sec. Okay, be careful. I went to the cafe where Mr. C was. He looked off before I even showed up. Normally, he was such a bright and positive-looking guy, so seeing him like this made me uncomfortable. What's up, man? Uh, yeah, um, I could tell he was really unsure of what to say. Come on, man, don't tease me like that. Just tell me. Okay, I went to a convenience store a little while back. Uh-huh. Well, Takashi was caught shoplifting and on his knees begging her to let him go. What? To the employee? No, to your wife. What? You're kidding. No, I'm serious. I was super surprised too, but that wasn't why I was surprised. If anything, it was after that. The second they went outside, your wife started beating Takashi, saying that it's your fault we got caught. Do it better. She looked so kind normally, but she looked completely different than usual. I felt so bad for Takashi-kun. You're kidding. I watched the video that he had. It was all on video. Exactly as he described it. Why would she... Well, I've been seeing her going into the slot machines right in front of the station recently. Also, you know the loan shop there? Probus? She's been going there too. You know anything about it? No, I didn't. I sure you didn't want to hear about this. No, I'm glad you told me. Yeah, you take care of your son, huh? After I left the store, I still couldn't believe what I had heard. But the video was absolutely true and it would explain both their behaviors. That weekend, I went fishing with Takashi. We like fishing, but my wife hated the smell of fish, so she didn't come. And that's why I chose fishing. I bought bento for the two of us and decided to have lunch with Takashi first. Hey, Takashi, you got anything you want to tell me about? Uh, no. I see. Can I ask you something then? <sighs> sure. One of my friends said that he saw you apologizing to a store employee because you shoplifted. Mom told you to do that, right? Huh? He finally looked up at me. H how do you know? I didn't tell you. Yeah, my friends saw the whole thing. Or Mom was mad at you. I'm sorry. 
It's okay. You don't need to be sorry. You didn't want a shoplift, right? Yeah, but mom would hit me if I didn't, and I just didn't know what to do. I'm sorry for being weak. <laughs> I hugged Takashi. A first grader knew better. He knew that he was doing something wrong, but he was forced. He must have been suffering the whole time. I started feeling rage build towards my wife. She made her own son shoplift while she borrows money to spend at the slots. I'm not letting this slide. I told him something after he calmed down. Hey, Takashi, Grandpa and Grandma said they wanted to live with you. Want to live with them? Away from Mom? With them? Yes. I don't want to live with Mom and do bad things anymore. I don't like it when she hits me. Okay then, let's fish today and take the fish to Grandpa. Yeah, I'm gonna fish so much. I gave our son to my parents' house and went back to the house as usual. The next morning, I pretended to go to work. Have a great day. Yeah, do you have any plans today? I'm gonna go have some tea with friends today. Oh, okay, have fun. Thank you. I headed to a certain place after talking to her. Around 9 a.m., I saw my wife coming to the slot machines. All right. Which machine am I gonna take today? I gotta win back the amount I lost. I see. How much did you lose? Huh? Why are you here? What about work? I took today off. I needed to talk to you. Oh, well, what are you talking about? Today is the first time I've come to the slot machines. I don't care. You've been addicted to gambling, so you've made a lot of loans. And now you've been forcing your son to shoplift so that you can spend that extra money on the slot machines, huh? Uh, why would I do such a thing? I saw a video of the whole thing. My friend saw it in person. Uh, hey, I was just relaxing here. I'll stop, so don't worry about it. Relax? You're completely addicted. Honestly, I don't care if you're addicted, though. We're getting a divorce. A, a divorce? Of course. You forced your own son to shoplift. I'm going to divorce you, and Takashi is going to live with my parents. They're all okay with it, too. A hang on. What's going to happen to me? I'll call the police, for starters. I'm going to report that you made our son shoplift, and so all of this shoplifting records were your fault. I'm not going to forgive you. I took a wild wife to the police. Of course, there were a lot of other incidents that I didn't know about. She was arrested, and we got a divorce. After my wife was arrested, I gathered my things and left the house. My wife was behind bars, and she wouldn't have a place to call home after she got out. She had quite a bit of debt, too, so she'll probably be homeless in the future. Not my problem, though. Tanabata Manga. I had a fiancé named A. Our parents had greeted each other. We had gotten the wedding and wedding venue chosen out. It was all going smoothly. However, the day before the wedding, Aiko disappeared with my childhood friend, B. I found out then that I was being cheated on. Of course, my parents were panicked and they were furious. Her father was the mayor, so there were quite a few big wigs invited to the wedding. Big bank execs, company CEOs, Senators, even. I was confused and lost when her father made an insane suggestion. I'm sorry, Taneo. You need to marry Tanako. Tanako was Aiko's younger sister, and still in high school. Of course, Tanako said, What? What the hell are you talking about? We can't do that. I feel so bad for Tano. We can't be saying that. We can figure things out later. This just needs to work for now. Do you realize what this will look like on our family if this engagement is called off? No, I don't want to. Tanako kept saying that, but honestly, I didn't hear what everyone was talking about because I was still in shock from Eiko. However, I could tell that we couldn't cancel because of all the invitations that were sent out by the mayor. Tanako eventually caved. Um... After the wedding's done, my parents should figure everything out, so I'm so sorry for my sister. She apologized, but 
I was shocked. However, we had the wedding, as we planned, except with Tanako as my bride. However, after the wedding, the parents didn't want to pay for damages, so... Tanako, you married this man. It was insane. You've gotta be kidding me. They would never be okay with it either. Honestly, I couldn't think about anything at all because of the shock I was in. My parents also told people around them about my marriage as well, so it would be weird for the bride to just disappear suddenly. But Tanako is still in high school. There was no way I could accept. That's why I was going to turn her down. But Tanako said, I can't leave you alone, Mr. Tanao. So is it all right if I just do things around the house to repay even a little bit for what my sister did? I wasn't sure what to say. However, the adults around her were all delighted and said that the whole thing would be fine if I just made Tanako my real wife. They sent all her stuff to my house. I was just shocked by this series of events. I just decided to throw everything in the wind. She would clean my house and cook for me. Mr. Dano, dinner is ready. Come on. I asked her while I ate the dinner that she cooked for me. Are you okay with this? You're here just being my maid, basically. I don't forgive my sister either. I don't want to leave you alone and my family is responsible for this. Tanako is so different from Eiko, even though they're sisters. Before I knew it, thank you. I was grateful for her. While going to school, she would take care of my surroundings and cook for me. She was becoming an important part of my life. We started spending more time with each other. Mr. Dano, I borrowed a DVD. Let's watch it together. Oh, this is that anime that makes you cry. Yeah. Oh, you want some wine or something while you watch? I'll make some snacks real quick too. Hang on. Looking at Tanako move so quickly, you and Aiko are siblings and yet you're so different. I asked her. Yeah, I get that a lot. My sister is usually pretty flashy too. Me? I prefer to be relaxed. <laughs> but you clean things well and go to school and study. More than anything, your cooking is delicious. Thank you. I've always liked cooking, so I've always practiced. I was spending a lot of time with Tanako, and before I realized it, it was becoming more and more invaluable to spend more time with her. Then, one day, I brought home some sweets that Tanako said she liked when... Hey, I'm home. Got you something. It's the strawberry shortcake from the store in front of the train station. You wanted it, right? Wait, what? Tanako had packed her bags. What are you doing? I'm leaving. What? Why? I tried to tell her to stop and listen to what she said, and I was shocked. Apparently, Eiko had returned to the house. This is seriously the worst. He was cheating on me. Sis? You broke your engagement and you're coming back here like nothing is wrong. What? Why wouldn't I? I came back to figure things out with Tano. He's my fiancé, anyway. I actually heard that you were acting like some kind of maid for him, right? It's fine, I got it now. You can pack your things and leave. What? You hurt him that bad and that's what you're going to do? Her parents, after hearing everything that was being said. I mean, she's back now. It makes sense that she be his wife. We're not exactly helpful. Aiko just said, told you to her face and looked like she had just won. Why the hell are you the one that's leaving? That's because I'm home. At that moment, Aiko came back into my room. You haven't finished packing? Hurry up. Oh, hey, Tano. Welcome home. I'm home now. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, I just told her to pack her things and leave. So just hang on, okay? We're going to be together forever now. To top things off. Apparently, she fell for you. As if. She thought she would be a replacement for me. Poor girl. I looked at Tanako and she was clearly crying, her face red. No more replacement games. Get out of this room. Eiko was mocking her. After hearing Eiko mock Tanako, I could hear something snap in my head. See? You're pissing him off. Get out. 
I'm telling you to get the hell out. What? Oh, what are you talking about, Tanao? It's me. You loved me and tried to get married to me, not Tanako. Yeah, and I'm so glad that I didn't end up marrying a woman like you. It was the best thing you could do for me. What? You're kidding, right? You were just using her as a replacement. I know how you really felt, sweetie. I have never used Tanako as a replacement for you. She is nothing like you at all. She works hard at school and cooks and cleans more than anything. She sacrificed herself for me when I was in shambles because you ran off. I love Tanako. Tanako looked at me wide-eyed after hearing me talk. What are you talking about? Why is Tanako more loved than me? This is insane. Not at all. You're self-centered. Tanako is much more attractive. Eiko looked like she had just been hit by a cement truck. Come on, get out. I chased her out. When it was just Tanako and I, I said, I didn't want to tell you because it was such a weird move to marry you just because your sister left. And you're still in high school. But I'm going to tell you anyway. I love you. Please marry me. Of course. I love you too. That's how we ended up getting married after the fake marriage. It worked out pretty much exactly how my in-laws wanted it to, but I did end up happier than before. By the way, Aiko was chased out for her selfish and reckless actions. She lost her house and money, so she lives in the streets now. I don't care, though. I think she deserves everything that's coming to her for hurting people. Tanabata Manga It had been six months since we bought our dream home and moved to this city. Nana, a mom friend of mine, asked to borrow my bike for a day, so I decided to lend it to her. We live in a residential area with many hills, and my husband commuted to work by a car. As a housewife, I only travel to nearby supermarkets and pick up the children from kindergarten, so I bought an electric bicycle. My child entered kindergarten halfway through the school year, so the mothers in my child's group were already close enough to get together privately for lunch meetings and stuff. I was shy to begin with, so it was harder for me to be a part of the circle, and I became a loner. Then one day, Nanae approached me. Nanae was very friendly and kind to a loner mom like me, and I was so happy that I had made a good friend. I was thinking of getting an electric bike too, so I was wondering if you would let me ride your bike for a day? I'll thank you in return. <laughs> no need to thank me. I agreed to Nanae's request because she was the one who asked me. My husband is here on the weekday, so I wouldn't use it. I was going to lend her the bike Saturday morning and have it back by Sunday. And on Sunday, the day she was supposed to return it, I'm sorry, the bike I borrowed was stolen. What? Where? And why? Uh, calm down and listen. I went shopping with that bike at a supermarket on 2nd Street, but I didn't lock it because I had to get some milk. And then, when I came out of the store, the bike was already gone. You didn't lock it? I just had to go to the store for 5 minutes. Do you lock it just for that? I mean, aren't you surprised that someone would steal it in such a short time? There are all kinds of people out there. <sighs> The bike is a year old, but I need it because I use it to take my kids to and from kindergarten. I need it for Monday. Of course, I'll pay for it. How much was it? I was relieved when she said so and brought the receipt I had kept with the warranty and showed it to her. The child seat and basket were sold separately, so the total with the bike itself was 150,000 yen. 150,000 yen? I bought something a little more expensive because I knew I'd be riding it for a long time. I see. I thought it was a stylish bike, so it's fine if I pay 30% of it, right? What? 30% is not enough to buy the same bike. And isn't it wrong for you to say that since you lost it in the first place? Oh my! You're in a theft insurance policy, aren't you? I know you can get a new bike with a 70% discount, and yet you want me to pay full price? What are you going to do with the difference? I have to buy it right away because I need it by Monday. 
so I'll get the full amount first and pay the difference later. Isn't that too much? I didn't do it on purpose either, and telling me to pay 150,000 yen on such short notice is impossible. And there's no guarantee that you'll actually pay back the difference. You think that about me and still borrowed the bike? The matter was not settled at that time. And then my husband who had gone out during the day on an errand came home and I told him everything that had happened. That's what happened! Hmm. If that's the case, I have a better idea. The next day, Nanae came with an envelope. Here, 45,000 yen. 30% of the 150,000 yen. You still went ahead and decided the amount on your own. Oh, about that. What? Do you have a problem? After that, I look into the theft warranty in more detail, but the warranty only covers the bike itself, and it covers only 30% of the manufacturer's suggested retail price, excluding tax. The bike itself is 150,000 yen, but the child seat which was 10,000 yen and the basket that was attached to that bicycle which was 6,000 yen aren't covered by the warranty. So. 30% of the suggested retail price plus consumption tax, child seed, basket fee, and assembly fee for the newly purchased one. If you add everything up, the total amount you have to pay for the bicycle is 80,000 yen. What? 80,000 yen? That's enough to buy a new electric bicycle! That's right. But you said you'd pay for it, right? I did, but... Also, I did some more research and found out that I have to return three keys that came with the bike when I bought it in order to get compensation for the theft. I have two, but do you have the other one? Oh, you said it was stolen because it was unlocked, so you wouldn't. Well, if that's the case, I'm not covered by the warranty. So, you're going to have to pay the full amount. I would have kept the keys if I knew that. It's your fault for not telling me. Well, we'll talk about that later. I'm going with my husband to report the theft, and I was wondering if you could come with us to the police station. What? It seems that the person who has the most detailed information about the theft needs to file the report. They ask for the date, time, place, and details of the theft. By the way, I heard that bicycle theft is punishable by a criminal record, even if it's your first offense. You and I are having such a bad experience. We have to get the police to catch them. As I tell her that, Nanae's face turned pale, and she suddenly became frightened. Ah, uh, about the theft report, can you wait for another hour or so? I just remembered something I have to do. After waiting for an hour, Nanae came riding my bike, which was supposed to be stolen. Wait, what's going on? I looked again where I parked and it was there. Maybe the person who stole it gave it back. Oh, and here's an apology for the trouble. Well then. Nanae said that and tried to go home after leaving the bike. Oh, thank goodness. Now we can find the culprit. I'll let you know if they catch them. What? The culprit? Yes, if we find the bike, I have a friend who is a police officer. So I was thinking of having him run it for fingerprints. It seems like a familiar M.O., so it could be a habitual offender. The acquaintance said if they can get fingerprints, they'll find them right away. What? My husband says so, but to tell the truth, there is such no acquaintance. Actually, my husband knew the whereabouts of my bike. I saw your bicycle at the parking lot of Nane-san's apartment just now. There was a frog figure on the basket. I'm sure it's ours. Are you serious? You can't have it stolen again. So let's catch the culprit and have them brought to justice. We were trying to teach them a lesson. That's why we put on this act. Yeah, right. We've got to get them. Right, Nanae? Then, that night, Nanae and her husband came over and... We came to apologize. I looked at Nanae's eyes carefully and saw that they were bright red. Apparently, she had been crying ever since parting with us. Her husband said that Nanae buys a new bike at a discount with insurance, then brings out the stolen bike and... I found it. I paid for it. So it's mine. 
but I paid for it, so give me the new one. Ah, I got a new one for cheap. The story goes that she was planning to do this. I am so sorry for what my wife has done. We will pay you alimony, so please don't tell the police. We beg you. Nanae's husband got down on his knees and Nanae broke down crying and got down on her knees as well. I'm sorry. I was so jealous of your wonderful bike. I am so sorry. I wasn't going to file a police report because there was no real damage and they apologized properly, but I've learned that I don't like having someone get down on their knees on the doorstep. I accept your apology, so please stand up. I thought they were stingy and also just plain crazy. In the end, I didn't accept any alimony and warned her husband to make sure Nanae never does this again. After that, Nanae and her husband moved to a town a little further away as if they were no longer comfortable in this town. Tanabata Manga my wife, she did something unbelievable the other day. Her father took out a loan for his business, and she made me a joint guarantor without even telling me. I had no idea about any of this until I got a letter in the mail. I had no idea about any of this. So I asked my wife what this was. Then... Huh? I thought I told you already. I made you the joint guarantor. What? I never agreed to that. And this loan is for your dad's business. This is a lot of money. But we're family. You're supposed to help me. Never agreed to this. What's wrong with you? Seriously. I was furious. I didn't even know what to say to her. Her grandfather founded the company many years ago. The company was doing pretty well when her grandfather was in charge. But then, after her father took over, things started to go south. He knew nothing about running a business. He hired people based on his type. Oh, you're hired. People started leaving the company after that. Earnings were down, but he kept spending the company's money on luxurious stuff like expensive cars and nice dinners. He paid himself extremely well, but rarely came into the office. He spent most of his time on the golf course. I tried to warn him countless times, but stay out of it. It was no use. I didn't even work there, so I decided to let it go. It wasn't my problem, you know. But now, I was his joint guarantor. His company was a mess. It was just a matter of time before it went out of business. And once that happens, I'll be a million bucks in debt. And I never agreed to this. She forged my signature on the loan application. It looked nothing like my real one. I went to go see her father right away. What the hell is wrong with him? He must be out of his mind if he thinks I'm just going to let this go. I told him I was going to report this to the authorities. But then, what? But we're a family. You're supposed to help me. But when my daughter asked you to help us, you said you needed time to think about it. We had no choice. Seriously, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Why the hell would I agree to be a joint guarantor of a company that's about to go under? I never liked her father to begin with, but I didn't think he was this crazy. And my wife was just like him. You should have said yes when we asked you to help us. <sighs> That's when I knew I had to end things with her. Look, I never agreed to this. And you forged my signature on a loan application. This is a crime. I'm going to the cops. But then... <laughs> the police? Seriously? You can't do that. She started crying. Why were they blaming me for this? There was just no talking to them. I decided to head home. I didn't tell my parents about this just yet. I didn't want to worry them. I called one of my colleagues and asked him to help me out. He introduced me to a really good lawyer. The lawyer told me to get the cops involved right away. My wife and my father begged me not to do that, but I had no choice now. But then I made another shocking discovery. My wife... She took all the money from our savings account. There was about 70 grand in there. We were saving up because we want a kid someday. And the thing is, 60 of the 70 grand was my money. I saved it up when I was single. It took me years, but now it was gone. Forging my signature and making me a joint guarantor of a loan wasn't enough. Now she was literally stealing from me. 
I didn't even know what to do anymore. I went to her parents' house to have a talk with her. But then, 70 grand? That's nothing. I can pay that back right away. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, that will take care of everything. Stop worrying. She didn't even apologize. Um, you know most of that money was mine, right? You used it all? We're married. That money is mine too. Just let it go. What did I ever see in her? I should have never married her. A few days later, I found out something unexpected. They analyzed my signature on the loan application. And, turns out, it wasn't my wife who forged my signature. And it wasn't her father either. Turns out, it was one of his employees. He paid him and asked him to forge my signature for him. Unbelievable. Anyways, I had more than enough evidence now. So, I went to go see my lawyer. Alright, I think that's more than enough evidence to prove that the signature was forged. I'll handle the rest. Sit tight. Thank goodness. And the lawyer told me that the bank was likely to sue him for fraud. A few days later, my lawyer and I went to go see my wife's father. When he realized that he was screwed, he started begging me to forgive him. He said he'll sell his company and pay me in full if I agreed to keep the cops out of this. All I wanted was to get my money back, so I decided to make a deal with him. A few weeks later, he paid me in full, and that was that. But then... Well then, I guess I'll move back in. I bet you missed me. Seriously? Are you dumb? I'm divorcing you. What did you think was going to happen? Divorce? For what? Everything worked out, right? Shut up. You really think I'd let you move back in? After everything you did to me? Get out of my life. I never want to see you again. Uh, what? Why? She begged me to forgive her, but my mind was made up. I just wanted her out of my life. So I handed her the divorce papers. Wait, no, please. It was pathetic. She tried to fight it, but I was too tired to deal with her. So I asked my lawyer to handle this as well. He explained to her that what she did was illegal and that if she wasn't going to agree to the divorce, we were ready to press charges. A few days later, she finally came to her senses and agreed to the divorce. She tried to fight it until the very end, but I wanted nothing to do with her. I never wanted to see her again or her family. It was time to move on with my own life. I decided to move out of the city. I wanted to get away from them as much as possible. And thanks to my lawyer, I got all my money back, so I had more than enough money to start a new life. My ex-wife went back to live with her parents after that, but they were constantly fighting. Apparently, she was blaming her father for everything now. Whatever. Not my problem anymore. She tried calling me a few times, but I blocked her, so there was nothing she could do. I was really grateful for my lawyer. He was really good. If it wasn't for him, none of this would have been possible. Oh, and about a year later, my ex-wife's father's company went out of business. When the loan application got rejected, he initiated pay cuts. But he kept paying himself the same exact amount as before. Naturally, most of his employees left the company, and the company went under a few months later. He lost everything. He even had to sell his house. Now they all live in some crappy apartment. Things weren't looking good for them. Ah well, not my problem anyways. Glad everything worked out. Time to move on with my life. My name is Taneo Tanaka. This is a story that happened before I married my wife, Nanako. I had a crush on Nanako at the time, and I used to go to the diner where she worked. At the time, Nanako's family owned the diner, and there were many regular customers who came to see Nanako, who laughed a lot and was very good-natured. A new male customer, Takashi, started frequenting the diner. Takashi's parents farmed in a place a bit far away, and he was originally in Tokyo but it seemed like he had come back. I saw him and Nanako talking a lot, and before I knew it, they were dating. He asked her out while I took my time and hesitated. Then one day, Takashi went to Nanako's parents to propose and greet them, saying that he wants to marry their daughter. Nanako actually has a disability, albeit a mild one, and she thought she would never be able to get married. Nanako's disorder is ADHD, by the way. 
The word disorder may sound somewhat heavy, but to the casual observer, there is no indication that there is a disorder at all. Nevertheless, she explained to Takashi that she had a disability, and asked him to decide on the marriage after considering that. As a result, Takashi's decision did not change, and the marriage went smoothly from there. Nanako married Takashi from working at the diners. And soon after the marriage, Takashi decided to move in with his mother. Nanako didn't say anything about it, but this is where it all went to hell. Takashi's mother after Nanako moved in. Hey, cripple! Hurry up and mow the grass! You have a disability, but it's thanks to my son that you got married, so work like you're going to die. She started to bully and yell at her every day. She made Nanako work day and night as if she were a slave, even though she knew nothing about agriculture. After about a year of such hellish days, Nanako found out she was pregnant. But by that time, she was yelled at every day. And Takashi, who thought he could treat Nanako any way he wanted to, started treating her like a slave. He made her work hard all day long on the farm, even though her belly was getting bigger. Even in the blazing heat in the middle of summer, it didn't change. They wouldn't let her drink water. And when she collapsed from a heat stroke... You're useless. You can't even work properly. All you're good for is working. So get up and get moving. And days went by as the mother and son continually abused her. They didn't nurse her despite feeling nauseous from heat stroke and high fever. And instead the words that came out of his mouth were... Work, you slow wretch. It's beneath me to take a day off. They would only shout abusive remarks. But the idiot mother and son thought she was strange for not running away after being treated like this, and that she deserved to be treated accordingly. And they escalated even more. Then one day, Nanako's belly was in great pain because of all the reckless things she was forced to do. She was two months away from giving birth. The two idiots couldn't imagine that Nanako who had never run away no matter what they did, would ever run away. Nanako escaped while the two of them were out in high spirits. Someone who knew her happened to pass by her on the street. And when she saw Nanako, he thought she was someone else because of her sudden change in appearance. That's how malnourished and scrawny Nanako was, I was told. Nanako was taken to the hospital immediately, but it was already too late. The child could not come out of her belly alive. Of course, this story spread quickly, and it caused a big stir. Nanako's parents met Takashi's mother several times. How was my daughter doing? They asked her how their daughter was doing. Takashi's mother... <laughs> They're getting along fine. ...lied to them. So it was a shock to Nanako, but they were shocked not knowing she had a child in her belly. Nanako burst into tears and told them about the treatment she had received not even knowing if that was a bad thing. The parents and regulars at the restaurant, it's a devil's act, they all said. It was quick from there. To Takashi and his mother's actions, everyone, this is not human behavior. Get a divorce, you jerk. And forcefully preceded the divorce while protecting Nanako. Because they're not in the city, they don't know much about the law and the penalties, but they succeeded in separating and divorcing the two of them. After a while, Nanako felt better and went back out to the store. But the grief of losing a child cannot be so easily wiped away. She was not smiling as much as she used to. After all they've done, Takashi and his mother. I didn't want a disabled wife in the beginning. The children you would have had would have been handicapped too. Was the result. Everyone around was obviously upset. Takashi's family had no ties to anyone in town, so it didn't hurt to get ignored from them completely. For some years, they worked her like a slave and only helped them make a profit. It felt like it was running victory, which was not right. All while that was happening, Takashi's mother was killed in an accident. Takashi was working Nanako hard, but he didn't have the skill. After what happened to Nanako, the people who were there originally quit one by one. Soon after, Takashi looked for someone with farming skill. What he did to Nanako spread. Who would work for you? You devil! and no one was willing to help. Although he tried to recruit part-time and other employees, this was also impossible. He had no choice but to do it himself. But he couldn't manage it, since he was clueless. Because it's not something that's going to have immediate results. He saw it crumble as time went on. And in no time at all, 
Takashi was in huge debt according to the people in the town hall. They say, karma pays off. And that's exactly what happened. Nanako was certainly a beloved presence in the town. Apparently, her parents were not the only one who wondered if she would be okay and happy when she got married. Since he put her through hell, no one gave him a helping hand. He has no immediate family either. No matter how much Takashi asked for help, people passed by unaided, and then the debt swelled. One of the regulars was talking about how he lost his farmland and even his house. And that's when people stopped talking about Takashi. Then there was talk that he might have committed suicide somewhere. Someone said that they saw Takashi in a shabby park where no one else would go. Takashi had become homeless, and the regulars were satisfied. After that, when Takashi wasn't even mentioned, I confessed my feelings to Nanako. Nanako's parents explained to me what happened, about the miscarriage and that Nanako was disabled. But I already heard about all of that from the people around me. And the fact is, I have a slight hearing impairment. I then told Nanako's parents about myself. I told them I know how hard it is to be disabled, and that I want to go out with Nanako even with all of those things considered. I know Nanako has been through some trauma. I told her that I thought it would be good for us to take a long time and slowly get to know each other. For a while, I just talked to Nanako at the store, and gradually, we started going out together, and we ended up dating. When I proposed to Nanako, I asked her to move in with me so that her parents would feel a little safer. It would be normal for them not to want her to live with someone, but Nanako's parents seemed surprised that I told them myself. I also suggested that Nanako's mother would have an easier time later on if we made the house a two-family house with a store on the first floor. I had lived in the city for a long time, but I had saved enough money when I was single, so financially I had no problem at all. In fact, I felt like I had saved up for this moment. When Nanako's mother heard my proposal, she cried and asked me to take care of her. It's been many years since then, but the rather small diner has been renovated and is filled with regular customers every day. Nanako, who works with me at the diner, is happily caressing her growing belly. The regulars come to support us up to today. Tanabata Manga. One day, my sister's child, elementary schooler next year, came to visit me so we went for a dog with my dog. Feeling uncomfortable being followed by a notorious delinquent brother and sister who were playing there, I ignored them and kept walking. My niece wanted to go to the bathroom, and an old lady dog friend was nearby. So, I tied the dog to a nearby pole and, um, could you watch the dog for a second? Asked her, to which she agreed, so I took my knees and went to the bathroom. When I returned a few minutes later, the dog had vanished without the trace. I asked the old lady who was in a panic about the situation. The delinquent brother was misbehaving with the dog, so the old lady scolded him, and when she took her eyes off, the dog was gone in a split second. I looked around, but I couldn't find the dog or the delinquent siblings. The old man who was on a walk and the old lady who also looked with me, but we couldn't find them. In the end, all I could do was thank them and leave. And the old lady who I asked to watch the dog for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. She cried and apologized, but I couldn't blame her because I was the one who entrusted her with the dog. But I was sad that the dog was gone. I smiled as much as I could so the old lady wouldn't feel responsible. I went home and stormed into the delinquent's house, as the delinquent siblings could be the only culprit I could only think of. Excuse me, did my dog come here by any chance? What? A dog? I don't know. The mother smirking at this point. But he disappeared from the park a little while ago while your kid was nearby. What? I really don't get it. I mean, did you see my kid stealing it? No, it's not like that. He's just a dog I really care about. That's why I'm worried and thought if you knew something. What? Are you saying my kids are thieves? You better apologize! Get out! The delinquent mother tried to shoo me out the front door and I realized it might have been rude and apologized. As I was leaving, I burst into tears, thinking about what I would do if I can't find a dog. So I was ashamed and frustrated at myself for leaving the dog unattended. 
My dog is a toy poodle, small and very cute. I give him haircuts so often that people ask to take pictures of him when I'm walking him. As I'm walking home, I ran into my father, who had come home early after hearing about the dog theft. I searched the area for an hour again, but I couldn't find him, so I went home. I felt bad for my niece who kept apologizing and crying, blaming herself. After that, I made flyers at home to put all over the town to get our neighbors and townspeople to help us. And the next day, we called the healthcare center. I was relieved to hear that a dog had not arrived. I asked them to please contact me if they find a dog that looks like it. I put up flyers around town and at my vet's office asking if anyone knew about my dog. I also put him up in supermarkets, city halls, and other places where people are likely to come and go, and waited for a call. And a few days later, the old man who's my dog friend paid a visit to my house. After listening to his story, I found out that the delinquent family were walking around with a dog he'd never seen before. They ran away when he tried to stop them, so being suspicious, he came all the way over to report it to me. Thank you so much for telling me. I bowed my head and thanked him. The old man. No problem. I hope you find him soon. Said that and left. When I hear the old man's words, I thought, I knew it and couldn't stop crying knowing he was alive. But I knew I shouldn't doubt people without proof. Like my father told me, the dog's chip number, pedigree dog insurance card, rabies shot certificate, and etc. Carrying every conceivable proof of my dog, I waited for half a day in front of the delinquent's house. The delinquent came out of the house holding my dog. I ran up to her, and she tried to run into the house with the dog in her arms, so I grabbed her arm just in time and confronted the delinquent. This is my dog, isn't it? No, it's not. Can you stop with the accusations? She kicked my leg and tried to hit me, but I couldn't let him go. This dog is family. Neighbors were gathering outside to see what was going on while we were yapping and arguing. The delinquent breathes heavily. Call the police! She took my dog! And yelled. I gave the dog to a neighbor and explained the situation, desperately trying to calm myself down for the time being. This is my dog! I have proof! Right here! and showed the delinquent mother the documents I had brought with me. No! What are you talking about? Stop playing! I'll kill you! The delinquent mother was screaming, and her kids were crying as well. Calling people thieves! I'll sue you! It was pointless trying to explain anything to the delinquent mother who was out of control. You guys need to calm down. Then, an old man from the neighborhood, who was sort of a big deal, appeared and decided to hear each other's arguments. The delinquent parent's side of the story is, This is my relative's dog, and they gave it to me. It's my dog! If you try to take my dog away from me, I'll sue you for defamation of character. No! This is my dog that either ran away or got stolen a few days ago. The dog has a chip. You can see for yourself. I explained how I was taking the dog to the hospital, which also could be looked into. The delinquent mother's attitude gradually changed as I presented her with more and more evidence about the dog. If your relative gave it to you, could you have them come over? Oh, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it was given to me by someone I know. Who is this acquaintance? Please, call them over. Oh, uh, uh, I think a stranger gave it to me. I... Uh, I really don't remember the details. The delinquent mother who was saying random things began to expose herself. The crowd started to increase around this point, and the old man and the old lady dog came over and testified that they searched with me. My mother appeared just as the delinquent mother was becoming more and more suspicious. The dog jumps on my mother, wagging his tail like it's going to break into a thousand pieces. My dog actually loves my mother and never leaves her alone at home. My father and I are always in tears, but I never thought that would come in handy here. It was clear to anyone which side was right when my dog kept licking my mother's tears as she held him. Th this dog! It's your fault for leaving him there in the first place! 
the delinquent mother admits her loss and said as if it was my fault. Someone in the neighborhood called the police when they noticed the commotion, so the delinquent mother was taken to the police. I don't know why the delinquent parent thought of stealing the dog, but stealing a dog is a very serious crime. There was a way to settle, but I wasn't going to, because this was a matter that couldn't be settled with just money. And after that, rumor has it the delinquent parents paid a hefty fine, and this spread like wildfire throughout the neighborhood. I asked a bunch of people about my dog and even put up flyers in various places asking for help in the first place. In a city like this full of dog lovers, stealing a dog is the same as stealing a family member or friend. The delinquent family were frowned upon, and I don't know if they became reclusive or what, but I stopped seeing them ever since. I saw the old lady who missed the dog so. I found him. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for looking with me. I thanked her. I'm so sorry they made him look like this. And she cried on the spot. My dog who had been trimmed so adorably was cut with scissors by the delinquent parents and was in awful condition. But I was happy just to have him back. So I told the old lady, Don't worry, he can grow as much hair as he wants again. I'll be back for a walk, so please chat with me again. She looked so relieved and happy. This incident made me decide to never let go of the leash ever again. Tanabata Manga. I was a senior in high school when I happened to see my father at McDonald's. I had no idea at the time that my father would disappear after that. That day, my friends and I stopped by McDonald's on our way home from school, and I happened to see my father when he was supposed to be at work. I was watching my father from a little distance. Maybe it's break time? But he's not wearing a suit. What's he doing? And then... A teriyaki McBurger set, a chicken fillet set, and a happy set. He ordered. Which toy would you like? Um, the boy's toy, then. Then a mixed-raced boy about five years old clung to my father's lag through the gap between the people in line, looked up at him, and smiled. My father also, to the boy. Wait a second, okay? And then he put his hand on his head and smiled gently. My father and I were not particularly close, but I was surprised that my father, who didn't talk much at home, would smile so kindly at a different child. Thank you. My father then walked to his seat, hand in hand with the boy. The boy hugs the beautiful foreign woman of Russian descent and says, Mommy, as the boy hugs her. The waitress will bring it to you. He said gently to the woman, and then my father and the woman sat talking as they looked at each other. My friends who had come with me had already finished ordering. Sorry, go ahead and sit down, then eat. I'll be right there. And then I approached my father and the two of them eating together in harmony. Hey, Dad, what are you doing here? Then my father spits out the coffee he was drinking all over the foreign woman sitting in front of him. Oh my god! The woman said and began to hastily wipe the coffee and my father tried to say something to me. But he was stumbling on a spot because he was also concerned about the woman. Then the kid. Who is this woman? Is it dad's friend? He asked my father, pointing at me. At that moment, my father and I froze, not grasping the situation. My father opened his mouth first. Uh, this is, this is not what you think. Uh. I took my father's coffee and took the lid off and splashed it in his face. You're the worst, jerk and walked away from the scene with those lines. I texted my friends. I don't feel so good, so I'm going home. And then went home. They asked me if I was okay and I told them that I was fine, but I wasn't okay at all. I walked home, feeling dizzy for a while, as if I had been hit in the head with a blunt instrument. Ugh, that asshole. My father did not return home that night and my mother was worried all night. 
He won't answer his phone and he doesn't reply to my texts. I wonder if he's involved in some kind of crime. I'm thinking of calling the police. She started saying so. Let's wait a little longer. Maybe he'll come back in the morning. Anne stopped my mother. But when he didn't come home the next morning, my mother, unable to stand it, called his office. And to her surprise... Tanabata san has been on paid leave since yesterday. She was told. My mother was speechless. After that, we contacted my father's acquaintances and relatives to ask about his whereabouts. But in the end, we were unable to locate him. When it came time to file a police report, I told them everything that happened at McDonald's the other day. Oh honey, why didn't you tell me sooner? How was I supposed to tell you? I was shocked too, and I didn't even check to see what the relationship was, so I couldn't say anything rash. Right, but thank you for telling me. I could see a few tears in my mother's eyes as she said that. Then my mother stayed strong for a while, but she was very depressed and cried quietly at night. My father never came home after that day at McDonald's. Suddenly a single mother, my mother changed from a part-time job to a full-time job and I started working part-time on my days off. Sis. It's okay. I won't give up. I postponed my plans to go to a technical school after high school for two years to save money on my own. I gave part of my money from my part-time job to my mom and saved the rest to pay for technical school. Finally, three years have passed since then when my father suddenly came home. He got down on his knees at the entrance to the house to everyone who was stunned. Sign the divorce papers and the documents regarding the relinquishment of my inheritance. He said. My mother asked him what he meant and he said something about wanting to give all of his property to a mixed race child. My mother was so furious, she pulled his hair, lifted his face up, and hit him as hard as she could. <laughs> Don't play with me. Do you have any idea what we've been through? Get the hell out of here. She shouted at my father in a rage I had never heard my mother utter before. My brother and I backed her up. No one was on my father's side anymore, and he continued to get down on his knees with a bloody nose. Please, sign this. If you don't sign this, she's going to leave me. I'll pay you alimony. Please sign the divorce papers and give up the inheritance. Father begged and pleaded as he was beaten, and every time he begged, my mother beat him. My father was a wealthy man, or rather, my grandfather had made a good fortune during the bubble years, and he still had the rest of it. He said he would pay alimony, but considering the rates, the amount of money received would be different between the alimony and the inheritance. And my father... My own children have the right to the inheritance even if I'm divorced. So if I die, I'm in trouble because I have to get the consent of all the heirs and stuff like that. He said something like that. I felt like killing him when I heard that. Also, I found out that my father actually had cancer. Just six months ago, he was not feeling well. So he went to the hospital and they told him he had cancer. So it seems that the affair was the intention that the son would inherit all of my father's assets when he died. If you can't give the whole inheritance to my son, I'll leave you right now. Apparently, she told him. He wanted to spend the rest of his short, possibly life, with a beautiful foreign woman and a cute little mixed-race child. When my mother heard that, What an idiot! I hope you pass from this cancer and cross the rivers of death. She was outraged. Afterwards, my mother and father had a proper discussion about the divorce. But my mother said, It's no use talking to him, and was angry. After a series of negotiations, my mother decided to sign the documents relinquishing her inheritance. He was to pay alimony considerably higher than the market rate and child support for me and my brother, 
for three years he was missing. Plus, the cost of my technical schooling until graduation and my brother's future college expenses. He took out some of my grandfather's inheritance and my father paid my mother in a lump sum. My brother was headed off to college. Now I can go without any worries. He was overjoyed. I'm also relieved that I don't have to work part-time anymore, so I can finally focus on my schoolwork. After that woman became angry with my father because he gave my mother a large amount of assets as alimony without telling her. When she received the rest of his inheritance from him, she apparently took his son back to the country without telling him when he was hospitalized for cancer treatment. Dos Vijania, goodbye. I don't know what happened to him after that. <laughs> he probably died alone. He got what he deserved. My mother laughed hysterically. My mother crying quietly for some time after my father disappeared may have just been my hallucination. But how could he ask us to give the inheritance when he's the one who should be giving it up and apologizing? My father is really pathetic. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. What did you think of today's episode? Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on today's story. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe! <laughs>